everybody. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's time to work. And looking forward to looking into what your mind's about. Going to the lighting and stuff. Are you ready? It's a dark place. <laughs> Light's always great in a dark place. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so thanks everybody for coming. Um, what we'll do is we'll look at a trailer for Lettering Sunday, so we get a good input into uh, the film that Jamie has here right now. No, no. Jane, you have no family. You have absolutely nothing to lose. That is a gift, and you must learn to use it. When did you become a writer, Miss Jane Fairchild? Three times over. The day I was born. The day Mr. Paxton gave me my typewriter. And the third? It's a secret. Good morning, Beachford House. Jay, is that you? Eleven o'clock. Not met like this before. Who was that, Jay? Wrong number, sir. On a Sunday. Good heavens. He's always late. He'll be forever yet. Stand there. He's studying, is he? What are you doing? Studying. Good for him. I wish I could take you out. Champagne and oysters. I've got to get married, become a lawyer. That's what's expected of you, yes. And you, Jane? What will you do? I want to write about life. Pain and anguish. And summon the memory. Can't you, Jane? For me. For you. Coming now. Coming now. I was working with actors of that level. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny when you, <clears throat> when you, when your career starts to shift, uh, positions and, um, you start to work with people that, um, before you had, um, just observed and admired, it comes an inherent nervousness, right? Um, but somebody like Olivia is just such a wonderful, warm individual. Um, she just dispels that so, so quickly, you know? And I think that's... I think that's a great thing about, you know, certain artists uh, is that ability to make the people around them feel as comfortable as they need to be to be the best creatives possible, you know. Um, and that's why I always find, um, you know, the energy on set and the, the attitude of people so important, you know. All of them have been really wonderful, you know, and, and you just you create a, a hallowed environment of energy and spirit, you know. How do you do that? How do you create that for your team, a feeling of, you know, to bring out the best in them? Um, I think it all, for me, it just starts with my own intention, you know. Um, I, I think I'm very much about energy and, and, and that sort of thing, and it's, it just begins with your own intention. And I think, you know, you can walk into an environment um, and you, you, f you feel um, the frequency is at a certain position or whatever, um, and I, and I think it's a th an important thing about a DP in today's place is, um, you know, you've really got to, you've, you know, if the energy's not right, you've got to shift that. And for, for me, it just starts as, as my own intention. And, and um, you know, in the process of picking your people that are going to be around you, um, you know, in your meetings and whatever, and, and, you know, perhaps you are working with the same people that you've built over the, the last years or whatever, but it's, you just got to have the right people around you, you know, and uh, y your behavior um, is the initiation of it. And sometimes you get into environments where 
I mean, the only department I can really control is my own. Um, and sometimes you get into environments where other departments potentially are having a, a tough time or whatever, but I believe uh, a, a good energy is infectious. More than anything else in the world, you know, vibrations are infectious, and you can just, you know, uh, you tr try try stay try stay angry if you're around somebody who's really happy. You know, it takes a lot of effort. You know what I mean? Well, so you got the you got the energy within you to keep that happening, because that's, that's the hard part. We try, we try, yeah. we try. Yeah. yeah. Week 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 nine uh, of a, of a feature film, it's uh, c can be quite tricky to keep that going, but. I, I always think about it as like um, as like energy investments, you know. Like, there's days where I'm up and my pull is down, um, and then I'll lift him up. There's days where I'm down and he's up and he'll lift me up. So, it's like I think if you develop that sort of relationship with people, it's um, you can't go wrong, really. How do you do that? Because you go back and forth between commercials and features. How do you do it like commercial? Because it's such short. You don't know the people. Sometimes you're shooting somewhere else. You have any? you know, things you do to just kind of break the ice when you go into it? Do you, do you know what? Uh, c commercials are easier in a sense because you you can you can pretend so well on a commercial, you know. Um, even if you're having a shitty time, you've got, you know, four or five days that you have to pretend that you are, you know. So, uh, you know, it's the, same, it's the same method. It's just kind of a little bit more, um, a, a bit sharper and a bit more precise in, in a sense, you know. But it, again, it's the same thing. It's just energy, and it's just um, you know you go in with a good spirit, and you know it's also intention. You know, if if you if if you are there as a creative to make the best project, it doesn't matter about any of the peripheral bullshit, right? Your heart's in the right place. I, you know, I I want to make you know I'll I'll you'll always have a battle with somebody. You know, my battles are generally with the the PM or the you know the line producer. You know, because because they're thinking money and and we're thinking. <laughs> creative right but your intention is right you know you want to make the best film possible right so I think people's intuition can 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 sense that uh, you know and, uh, tricky creatives you can bear you can bear against tricky creative people as long as the intention's correct you know that's where the truth is isn't it yeah, sure. yeah. I think it's a great way to go over to look at the uh, work that you assembled before starting the movie to have a look at uh, the mood boards and things because is that where it starts for you, with finding images? Yeah, <laughs> totally. You know, for, for me, I've just learned to really lean, lean upon my intuition. Um, I realized very early on that um, the way my mind and, and sort of heart works is that it's, it's, it's very much an instinct, instinctual-based process for me. So, um, and I don't know if, if, you, if, you, if you get this feeling, whenever, whenever I go into a new city, um, it's that, f that first drive from the airport to the hotel that I, I, I develop that feeling for that city, you know? And it's, it's because it's, it, it's the first time that your, your, your senses are being exposed to that experience. And that's when it's most visceral. So I, I apply that to the script, the script as well. So you, the first time you read the script, that is when your instincts are reacting to how you feel it should be told, you know? And um, so, so, you know, I, I try not to have any sort of prescriptive discussion with anybody before I've read the script. I, I want to read the script naked and 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 react off the script and and feel it, and um, and uh, and what I do is I, I that's when I start the process of building um, the Bible, the lookbook, the you know, the, the thing that represents you know how I see the visual progress of the the narrative being you know. So what he's saying is so true about about this airport drive because. It's always when you first get exposed to something, right? That you actually you can trust your feeling about it, right? Sure. How is it for you with lighting? Isn't that this this first time, you know, when you change a lighting or when you're trying to get something right, you get used to the lighting sometimes. Have you experienced situations where you just need to turn things off or, or move somewhere else to to get a fresh look at? Ab ab absolutely. Um, you know, the the lighting thing is such a, a, a great um, comparison because Again, for me, lighting is a feelings-based thing, right? You know, it's it's um, what is the feeling we're we're going for here, and and how do we get there? And you you certainly, and I'm sure there's DPs amongst the audience. All of us have been in that position where it just doesn't feel right, you know. And um, what you said there is completely right. Is you know sometimes you just turn everything off. You you know you just say give me you know said your AD who who hopefully you've developed an empathetic relationship with. And you said your AD, listen. Give me, give me, give me 15 minutes here. I need to figure this out. 
you turn everything off. You have your blank canvas, and then you just simplify it. You just start with your basics, you know. Um, you know, and, and very, very rarely um, do your fellow creatives force you into a position that doesn't feel at least 80% there for yourself, you know. Um, and again, that goes back to um, the development of relationships with people, you know. Um, I think if, 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 if you always develop an empathetic relationship with the people around you, there'll be a respect with regards to that, you know. Um, and, um, and then, you know, there's definitely going to be a day when you're going to have to lean on somebody, you know. It's so true. Yeah. It's this first encounter with getting into production, meeting people for the first time. It's fades up very fast, the first impression. <laughs> you try to pretend something. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's have a look into... So, you've written here allowing empty spaces to be characters. Yeah. Yeah, so, so one, of, one of the things that struck me about, about, about this film and, and, and what, what we were doing was a, a, about the emotional position of, um, of, of the environment, H homes, you know, homes. Homes have this ob objectivity to them, where they observe generations of families passing through them, and 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 they themselves are, are hallowed spaces that experience love, heartbreak, death, birth, um, and 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 all that entire range of, of emotion. Yet they they stay as objective viewers, um, and I really wanted to. I wanted to bring a personification to the spaces um, and, and with the use of light. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because um, my, myself and my, you know, when I was, when I was a kid, the house I, I, I lived in as a kid, um, it had a very um, specific feeling to it, you know. And, and, and I remember as a child, um, you know, gazing at uh, images very similar to this here um, in, in the home I grew up with and just being entranced by the... Um, um, you know, by, by the organic nature of light, you know, because I think so often one thinks of light as just, again, an objective thing that just that, that floods a room or, 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 you know, the sun is on or the moon is on. Or, but, you know, in real life, light, light moves, you know, and, and, and light has its own per personality. So I really wanted to, I really wanted to, in the tre in, at the treatment phase, which, which, which was important for producers and, and the gaffer and, and even art department, was to, to build in this idea of um, you know bringing a personality to these spaces and, and one that one that reflected the, the the different families who lived in the different spaces you know. Do you work a lot with when light comes in how it balances within the room? Is there something where we try to recreate fill light inside as well and try to keep everything outside to kind of make the balance work? Yeah, it's interesting you know because you know scene by scene requires the diff different things technically right, but. Um, what's what's for me what was so important about a strong sort of window key um, was that it it allowed um, a, um, a level of, of focus that uh, within the frame you know so if you're exposed to like a, a you know a hard window key generally you, you you create a contrast that's quite difficult to achieve in location based shooting you know so um, you know my, my gaffer and I before we kicked off Julian White um, you know he took me to um, um, you know, one of his gear, the gear houses that he gets gear from. And, you know, we tested a whole range of, of lamps to see, you know, what lamps gave us the right type of, of, of shadow, shadow ratio, you know, the right type of shape, the right type of shadow ratio, you know, um, which was a really cool, it's, a, it's, really, it's really cool to be able to do that, you know. Um, and, and again, that's maybe the difference between narrative and commercial. In commercial, you, you're flying by the seat of your pants a lot of the time. Um, but with narrative, you know, y you can build in so much time to, to, to do these things. So yeah, you know, in, 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 you know in, obviously, you know, w once you put characters in a room um, and they're moving around and your director w needs to see different beats of performance, you know, you, ha you definitely have to add things and, and, and bounce, you know, um, um, and, and shape the room a bit. And then, you know, an another thing that was important about the treatment was that because I wanted this, this approach of, 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 of sort of a hard window key, I really needed art department to get on board with me with regards to the color palette of the rooms, you know, because if you try and do this in a room that's eggshell white, it's, it certainly makes it a lot more difficult, you know. So, you know, just getting the, getting the buy-in of your uh, production designer really early on um, allows them to build their palette um, th that helps you, you know, and, and, and just, you know, just bringing your circumference down, you know, to at least below 14% gray so that your skin tone's really 
um, shine through, you know. Totally. There's this, it's interesting, for example, in the middle picture, because the screen obviously is a tree or something outside. Do you look for that kind of messiness, or do you try to take, take it out? Um, there's a, an inherent perfect point to, to, to the natural experience of light, right? There's, 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 a, there's a, a hyper real point in, in, in natural lighting where it's like, okay, I, I want that, yeah? And in that, there's a little bit of blue from the sky. There's a little bit of, you know, silver lining light from the cloud. There's a little bit of bounce, green bounce, you know? So all of that color spectrum exists in that. So it's important to have that, right? But there are circumstances where you know, all of a sudden this British sun just comes out from behind the cloud for 15 minutes and, and bounces, you know, the entire green field into the room. And then it's like, you know, this is just never going to cut. So it's important, you know, it's important to observe what that, what are the elements that make that, that hyper real moment, um, what gives it its personality. Observe what that is and meditate on it because it takes a, time, it takes a while to really figure, it out, figure out what's doing what. And then you freeze that moment in time. And, and then, it's, it, for me, it's once, once you've figured out what those elements are and you just pull them apart, it's quite easy to re replicate. So, you know, in, in one of the, you know, we, what was tricky about this was that we were in um, Paul Sheringham's bedroom for like, you know, 10 days. And, and it's the space of three hours that they're in there, you know. So we, we really, and, and obviously, you know, uh, irony. Uh, you know the poetic irony of filmmaking is that the director chooses the south-facing fucking room. You know, so <laughs> you've got your son, you know, doing this or whatever. So it's d difficult to control. So do you start to add green things like this to it? Um, so I wouldn't. I, I don't think I ever added um, green like that. But what what I would do was I would um, take away the window. Um, take away parts of the window and then add, you know, add like sky panels and stuff to replicate the window and then just leave, leave a section of window that was, um, you know, either for the sky or for the, um, you, know, for, for, you know, bouncing the trees or whatever. So it would be tricky to add that green, but it was just more about controlling the amount of it, you know. Um, I've seen in, in images uh, on the web, you use a microphone a lot to turn the headset. Yes. How, how does the workflow work? Um, so, it's, it's an interesting thing that because f for me, you know, I, was, I got to a point, you know, in my career where I really felt like I, I felt like something something wasn't so, something on set wasn't working. Um, I, I couldn't really put my finger on what it was, and uh, I kind of thought about it over over a bit of time, and I realized I realized that the the issue that I was experiencing was with communication, right? You know, um, uh, we were in an environment where, um, you know, a lot of the um, a lot of the HODs and a lot of the people around were ca kind of more from the o the older days of uh, you know filmmaking, where it was sort of more regimental and mili military in a, in a sense, where there's a lot of shouting and there's a lot of like, you know, dialogue happening over other people's dialogue, and it's just a lot of noise, right? Um, and and I I, I realized that y the thing that I really wanted to do was just to try and streamline that that thing of communication, you know. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, you know, did, did some research, or whatever, got hold of um, um, a comm system, and, and f I mean, that, that, that was like a, a really, really strong, pivotal uh, change in, 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 in my progress. I know it can maybe seem quite simple or whatever, but uh, for me it made a really big difference because just to be able to, sp to speak and communicate to the right people just underneath that noise, um, it, it, it changes a your your accuracy of doing things, the speed with which you do things, but then also just the the energy of not having to shout at people, and 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 for people to I think when people are on a comm system, they're part of a a, a family of idea, right? Um, and they and they're part of that. You know what I mean? And it's you know, and, and I'm a great believer in um, empowering everybody uh, who's in my team. You know, there's no there's it's definitely not a um, a, a dictatorship, a dictatorial pr process. You know, it's it's an empowerment. It's having people on the same journey as you. You know, so I'll, I'll share my treatment with my entire team. You know, uh, d down to the data wrangler, or, or you know, every, everybody, everybody who wants to see it, and I, and I try and get them to want to see it. But just, um, just to get them on the page, and, and I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised when something comes out of that. 
you know, where, where you know, I'm, I'm tired and I'm stuck and, you know, I'm sitting there and I'll look over at the second AC and I'll be like, the fuck am I going to do here? And he's like, well, I have an idea. <laughs> you know, give it to me, <laughs> you know. That's beautiful, yeah. Who do you have on your comm system? So I'll have, um, depending on what we're doing, if it's like a grip heavy, a grip heavy thing, then, you know, I'll, I'll always have the HOD. So I'll have, you know, grip gaffer, me, um, first AC, um, and, um, and, and a lot of the times I'll have my DIT on as well because they'll be managing exposure a lot of the time. Um, um, but then if it's a, obviously if it's like a grip heavy thing, then, uh, you know, it'll probably be grip and best boy and then maybe, you know, somebody's operating a techno or something like that. So it depends, it depends on what we do. But as a base, all the, all the HODs, um, uh, you know, will have the comm set and they'll always be plugged in, you know. And then of, often, like, I'll, I'll be, like, talk, talking to my first or whatever, um, and they'll be observing the conversation and w w without me needing to say, okay, and you guys need to do... They, they've observed that they're smart people mm. and they're, you're already getting on mm. with it, you know? Yeah, it's great to hear. It's silence and set. It's also like some people have to talk, like actors and directors. And, and they should. Yes. And they should. And then that bandwidth is for them. It's not for... Um, Okay, it's not for a group asking for tracks. Or do you know what I mean? I totally, I totally know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's a key, because there's a certain energy that's there on set, and with all the technical stuff around it, mm -hmm. it often seems more important in the second, but actually it isn't, it just has to. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's great. Okay, night stuff. What were you doing with the blue hour? Yeah, so, so for me, Th this whole, this blue hour thing was more about um, about the balance of, of cold and warm, um, and if, if if you watch the film, hopefully it, hopefully it comes through the idea of, of shadow and you know cold and warm and shadow and light, and I mean you know that's just really representative of, of hope you know and um, and one of the driving arcs in this story is um, you know is, is is about her in inherent hope that lives inside her and and, and her dreams you know. And, um, you know, the idea that, um, you know, th th that hope will always exist in some shape or form. Um, and so that was what this kind of cool, cool, warm balance was about. Did you go into specific colors, like figuring out what's, what's the night, what's the blue? Yeah, you, you know, we, uh, but that was more in, in the process of making it, you know, because me and, me and uh, my colorist developed um, a lot shooting lat for the film um, and that shooting lat was uh, you know reacted in a very specific way to certain colors um, we didn't have quite enough time to to test the colors of the practicals but you know within the first few days we, we were able to look at them and see what was working um, and also the you know the levels as well yeah. yeah it's just gorgeous stuff here with the different color tones that play in together no what's mm. happening here yeah very printy When you look at color references, that's something what would you then go in to do with the art department as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, so color was such an important thing. And um, very, very early on in the, in the reference process, um, you know, we came across this, um, this whole autochrome movement, early 1900s autochrome movement, which was the birth of color photography, you know. And, um, you know, it was done on, on slides. Um, and, you know, these, these slides have kind of survived to this day and age now. And, and, and you know, and, and, and when scanned properly, they have just such a magnificent um, uh, personality to them. And it was something that, f from a color palette and from a, a feeling point of view, uh, was such a driving force in, our, in, a, in Ava and my choices, you know. Um, f f you know, f f from my side, from, from the position of, um, you know, the way... Um, the autochrome photography always f felt like um, you're almost observing a scene as a memory in a way. Um, the way that the edges fall off, the way that the focus de ha handles with things, the highlights, the lows, uh, they really represented that feeling of a memory. And, and, and I think more than anything else, if, uh, that, that feeling of a, of a, of a memory, that, that eu euphoric kind of representation of how your mind deals with happy and sad moments um, was, was the f almost like the feeling generator of this, you know. And then we found a bunch of color references, and then this 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 birthed uh, our initial discussions with um, Helen Scott and Sandy Powell. Helen did um, production design, Sandy did costumes, and we, and it, you know it was a, the process of um, hey, how, how do we how are we all feeling about this? And, and everybody really really loved how the reds were, how the blues were, 
And um, if you can, see, if you see the film, um, one of the key outfits for um, uh, for Jane is is very very similar to this red, you know. And then Sandy said to me, "Look, you know, um, how, how do you want to deal with this?" And I said, "Well, I'm I'm, I'm going to do a shooting lat, so I would love to see how the shooting lat re lat reacts to 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 your base your base color." And I think I think she, what she wanted to do was she actually just wanted to drown out the color a little bit for real, so that it reacted um, well to the lat. I think um, uh, it took her it took her a couple of attempts, but she, you know she hand dyes everything. She's an incredible artist. She hand dyes everything, and she you know she really kind of color to her is as important to, as it is to me. Um, uh, anyway, we got we got where we got. What do you do with lenses on this movie? Because you're you were touching on defocus and stuff. Yeah, so 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 the the, the, the whole process of of, um, uh, of of creating that texture was was really fun to do. You know, um, I spent a lot of time in um, at Harry at Harry testing oh, basically their whole their whole lens supply. I think they really um, loved having me there. <laughs> um, but um, you know, they showed me they showed me stuff like old old projection lenses, and they showed me like um, you know s some of their ar archived lenses. Um, you know, and and even though a lot of this that stuff was too heavy for a narrative, it was for me it was an education because I I could see what age did to glass and understand that you know, um, and then a, as a base uh, package I settled on super baltars which are which ha have a, a definite inherent personality, and um, and because we shot open gate, we were we were far back enough to you know to really allow the edges of the lens to play a role in the in in, in the storytelling. And then um, I, I really wanted to reflect um, the personality of autochrome, so I, I, got, I, got, um, I got these guys to blow me a, a bunch of glass at, at different thicknesses um, uh, with different aberrations, um, trying to keep the center sort of optically correct, but just letting the edges kind of fall off. And, 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 and you know, it was um, we, uh, my, my, my focus puller named the box art glass, uh, so it was, it was quite, a, um, quite a funny, uh, funny thing. But you know, uh, we never really went overboard with it. But you know, on the wides and, and, and in certain moments where we were sort of setting up the emotion of a scene, we would use stuff like that. Oh, composition. M mind going into that? Thing we were doing? Yeah, of course. So uh, a thing that dawned on me very early in, in you know in my relationship with the script was was the idea of of, of having a, a very um, subjective camera. You know. Um, be, being being sort of within that magic bubble of of, of the cast and of, of the moment, you know, the story is about intimacy really, um, and then the loss of intimacy, which is which creates the contrast that really drives it. But you know, this I think this is Bill Brandt um, over here. Um, uh, we never went this wide or this close with it, but but it, it really. It, it, he was he was he was he was brilliant in in the way that he he positioned a camera because. Uh, the camera became the third actor in the scene, in a way. F for me, it, it, you know, it really drove the, the choice of, of, of the, the lens sizes that we used, and, and, and also, you know, the close focus of the lens and, and, and the shooting stop that we would choose. But it was just the, the idea of just being subjective uh, as much as possible. You know. Did you operate? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love operating so much, you know. Yeah. Um, and obviously, in some circumstances, you can't do it. And you, can't do it and you have to relinquish that control which is re really difficult <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah especially if it needs to be subjective in that kind of a way Absol comes down to, yeah. absolutely to try i mean to, to trust an operator for me has been one of my my hardest uh, things to do just to really even a steady cam up i'm like okay <laughs> you know <laughs> good luck <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's and so with the beat right yeah, so so the, these slides. So uh, th this was the the process of giving the um, giving the different homes um, their own personality, you know, which which was which was representative of the family's um, personality, you know. Um, so so Beechwood, which is which is where Jane worked, um, uh, you know, still had a life to it, still had a hope to it, and that was embodied by Colin Firth's character. You know, he's he's the character that always just tries to keep things kind of upbeat. Um, and um, you know, t you know, to to the to the anguish of his wife Olivia Coleman. She, if you watch the film, you'll see she always always uh, chastises him for it. But you know, he tries to keep things. You know, it's that British thing of like, you know, everything will be okay. Step step up up a lip, right? Um, mm -hmm. So the house was sort of representative of that. You know, it was um, um, you know the hope existed. Yeah, has a lot to do with 
direction of light too no? and how it fills it up because it doesn't matter if it's sunny or if it's cloudy mm. there's this yeah yeah there's a definite hot hot spot to fall off ratio that that we just try to keep that we try to keep going what do you do with practicals these days do you extend them or you try to work off of them uh well it depends on it depends on a number of things you know i mean as much control as possible is plan a and obviously that's in the in the world of like your new stereo bulbs and things you know that that's 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 kind of that's kind of um makes it easier but you know it's again it's it's in the it's in the pre-production and and you know just opening lines of communication so you know my gaffer was um chatting to our department really early about you know who's going to handle practicals you know wh whose responsibility is it and then then you come down to conversations of aesthetics you know um uh, w w what level it will that um, 40 watt tungsten read right at? Are we getting enough practical light off it? Do we need to add practical light? Um, I, I'm not a I'm not a major fan of, of of practicals blowing out, which which is detrimental in the sense of using them as a light source on people. So I've I've had to find find ways to um, accommodate like a an exposed practical, and then you know you you, you sort of add. You add add what it's doing, you know. It's crazy, isn't it? We always kind of tend to first look at the brightest part in the picture, even if it's not sure. in focus, no. Sure. So it's that's that's always the issue with the practicals if you're using them to light them, no. Absolutely, and uh, you know what? You know, we referenced a lot of these um, Dutch Baroque and whatever paintings, you know. And I mean, uh, uh, to a paint uh, a painter's eye, he'll you know he'll expose the practical, but he'll also expose the character. But you know, practically, it doesn't work that way, you know. So it's just finding ways to do that. So you like working with LEDs, it seems like. Absolutely, but 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 for me, there's two layers to lighting. You know, you've got your 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 big strokes, which is your your bigger your bigger lights, and then you've got your um, your small brush strokes. And the small brush strokes have become, you know, sky panels, stereos, um, you know, the smaller stuff. You know, the stuff that you know you use to to craft the image. You know, and having it all plugged into. Um, one unified source allows you just such a, an ease of, 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 of manipulation, you know. Do you work the dimmer board yourself to figure stuff out? No, no, I try, I try to avoid that as much as possible. <laughs> I've had to do it in the past and I had a terrible experience uh, with it. Um, and uh, I think I've got some PTSD uh, with regards to that. But, I, you know, I'll choose colors and, uh, you know, and whatever. Um, but uh, let the professionals do that, you know. It's interesting what, what drives your focus, right? And having, being close to the camera and moving it is one thing if it's physical, mm -hmm. but as soon as it's going just to your hands, it's, that becomes an instrument you've got to learn not to sure. do that. Yeah. Sure. That's true. That was, uh, I guess, fractured image? In the treatment phase of the, um, of the job, you know, Ava and I were talking about um, having these kind of lonely moments with uh, Jane where, where, we, where we had these sort of vignettes of her um, in different phases of psychological positioning, you know, um, and one of the things I wanted to do was um, just use reflection and and frames within frames and, and just interesting composition just to kind of represent um, different sort of emotional patterns and positions, um, which is, you, you, you know, we, we, we definitely touched on it, but it wasn't something that we evolved as much as I would have liked to, um, but, but it's still there and I think that's, for me, the importance of doing a treatment is that you know, when you've got this, the headspace of pre-production, um, you imprint this on the idea and it exists. So no matter how busy and how ca crazy you get when you're shooting, it's still there, you know? Yeah, because it has to become your own. It's not copying something like this or replicating it. It's, sure. it's your art that gets out of it, no? Sure. Yeah. Then it goes into color all of a sudden. Yeah, so this, this was an idea that, that fell away um, for a number of reasons. Um, I, I wanted, I, I wanted like, they, they had, the, it was written that they had this, um, the, the, this greenhouse, right? Um, um, and, the, you know, they, they made love in the greenhouse. And it was like, the greenhouse was almost like this kind of Shangri-La for them. We couldn't find a greenhouse on any of the reckeys. There was just, they couldn't afford to build one. Um, and what I wanted to do was just kind of color the windows, you know, so that, um, mm. you know, the windows were, were, were warmed up or something, just to have like, you know, just to have certain of their moments be a complete palette cleanser, an image palette cleanser, you know. Unfortunately, um, we couldn't find the place and we tried to bring color in somehow in, into those and it just didn't work, you know. But 
it's, it's, that's the journey, right? It's t absolutely. Yeah, so this, this thing of intimacy was, was an interesting discussion because I wanted to, you know, you can create intimacy in, 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 in a number of ways and I, I, I wanted to meditate on what those ways were and, and um, you know, it's easy to do it with lensing, it's easy to do it with composition, um, but I wanted to bring it in with lighting as well and, and that's where the, the, the relationship to highlight and shadow came into play um, and, and, and the, the use of shadow to, to, to focus the frame um, and thus creating int intimacy by the lack of information around. Even though you're in, um, a, you know, you're in a, a big old bedroom, just the fact that there's a, a pool of light on the bed that you've exposed to, uh, that becomes your space, you know? Um, so yeah, that, 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 that thought process was kind of born here. That's so interesting because it's like, for example, here it's such a little part of the frame, right? And it still draws you to it. Sure. But the, and there's there's so much not being said there, so that creates that creates your curiosity, you know, and and with it, with curiosity comes focus, you know. So so as soon as you make an, the audience curious, you've grabbed their attention, and then therein lies the focus. So I, I remember a great anecdote. I think it was a um, a Hitchcockian anecdote, where um, I forget what movie it was, but there was a scene with a telephone and he purposely framed out the phone and then the whole audience was looking around to try and see the, the moment. Obviously, you can't because it's a screen, it's two-dimensional, <laughs> but, but that's the trickery of it, right? So, so with, with, you know, like a shot like that, you're wondering what's, you know, what's around the corner and then as soon as you've evoked curiosity in, in your audience, then there's the focus. So intelligent. It's trademarked you. <laughs> yeah, same thing with contrast here, no? That's interesting too, with the blue around. Do you work with color contrast too? Yeah, absolutely. You know, warms, colds, um, you know, your complementary, your not complement, you know, um, your antagonistic colors, you know, because, uh, you know, that's a good point. Like con contrast, can, contrast can be a tone thing. It can be a color thing. It can be a... You can find it in, um, you know, you pointed out the, the dark against the light. You know, even that is like a reversal of it, which is True. another use of it, you know. True. True. It's gorgeous. Do you like front lighting, like here, something like this? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, with lighting, you, you know, you've got um, a whole box full of tools, right? You know, you, can, you know, there's so many ways that you can light something. And I guess the journey is knowing how to, to use those techniques, but then also the discipline is, is, is when to apply them correctly and how to apply them correctly, you know. Um, you know, some, some, moments, some moments will need something like that and some won't. And it's just, the, you know, the journey is figuring out, you know, when best to use them, right? Absolutely. There's no rules to art, no? Sure. That's gorgeous. Did that come from? Is that where the idea came from? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that uh, that light source hitting here across. Mm. It's genius. Yeah, that image has, has has been with me for a while. You know, um, I think uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a magpie, right? You know, you uh, you know, being uh, being dyslexic as a kid, uh, I've my life has been way more a visual journey than a, a than a journey of words. Yeah. So I've, I've always just collected, collected imagery, whether it's up here, um, whether it's up there, or, or um, if I've, you know, I've stored it on, on, on my computer or on Pinterest or on Instagram, or wherever it is. But it's, you're a magpie of, because you see something and it gives you a feeling and you're like, okay, I want to store that, you know. Um, so that, that image had been with me for quite a while. Um, and I, you know, you're like, I just want to wait for the right moment to use something like that, you know. It's, it's, I've seen it with, with only with really amazing people that they were able to take a weakness and make a total strength out of it. I think that is so inspiring what you're saying now because, because that's what it is at the end of the day. Mm. To figure out something out to make something extremely strong out of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's gorgeous. When focus and light comes together, no? Absolutely. Yeah. How is it for you with blowing out windows? I mean, this is just, I've never seen such an example like this because you still have exposure, but then there's overexposure too in the same thing. Do you know what, the, the wind, the, as, a, as a DP, the window thing is, has, be, has been its, a journey of its own, you know, because 
I think shooting against location-based window shooting is, is, is one of the major lessons for a DP. Well, for me it was anyway. Um, you know, I think the first time I was ever confronted with a hot window, I almost died, you know what I mean? Because I had no idea what I was doing. I think I was still at film school and we were shooting in a building. Um, all the reccees had been sort of um, at a time of day where that background was good, you know. And uh, all of a sudden it comes to the, 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 the time to shoot and of course the sun comes out and now this window's like, reading it like 64. <laughs> shooting your characters against a 64 uh, background. But, but anyway, be, uh, you know, the long and the short of it is that, you know, my journey with Windows is, has, has, has been its own thing. And now I, I, I lean into the overexposure, you know, because it's real, you know, and unless you, unless you are telling a, a relationship with the background, I just lean into it, you know. Um, and obviously there's a, there's a technical point where overexposure looks shit and we don't want anything to look shit. But, you know, you use it, you know, you lean into it and you use it. And, um, you know, overexposure and, and, and you know, that, that highlight wrapping around characters, you, you know, you can use it as a tool to tell something, to tell a feeling, to tell an emotion, right? You know, and then obviously you have to de develop, develop ways to manage such things, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just, you know what? It's, it, you know, it's it, some of it's from um, trips to galleries. It's spending time in, in in the bookshops that are attached to galleries, and then it's finding that stuff on the net that that, that has inspired you. Um, but it, it, you know, it's a piece of advice that I gave to some students the other day. Was they said they said to me, if if you could um, if you could give yourself your younger self a piece of advice, um, what would it be? Which was actually quite a quite a tricky question, but I thought about it, and the the answer was um, I would I would write more stuff down, yeah, and and then writing more stuff down is what 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 was that piece of art that made you feel that way at the Tate, yeah, um, what who was that photographer who did that interesting composition that you glanced at momentarily, you know, who was that person, write it down, you know, write it down, take a screen grab of it, because. You know, uh, it's just to have um, have a bounty of, 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 of images that you can just you know. If you need some inspiration, this is where it comes from. You know, you're like I, I can't I can't I can't figure out how to tell this scene, um, and then you just go into your library of, of, of cool of cool stuff, and you like suddenly you'll land on something. And it'll be something maybe even quite obtuse about that reference. Will suddenly turn the light on for you. You know. Um, but it's, you know, and it's, it's again, it's like, you know, p people say, you know, a, p a PM once asked me, um, you know, what am I doing with my prep time? Yeah, so she, she's like, well, you know, what are you doing with all of this prep time? And I'm like, well, I'm thinking a lot. And, I, and, I'm, and I, you know, I, I'm, I, she's like, you, you, go, you leave the office and I'm like, yeah, I just went to the tape to go and, to go and look around and get some, they didn't understand that process, but, but it's so important just to, you know, immerse yourself in all of that, you know, um, which is, I think, what's also really cool about this festival is the way they balance, like, art and um, uh, cinema, because it's hand in hand, right? You know, there's, no, uh, there's no border between any art, really. Um, it's just your perception of it, right? Yeah, the nostalgia thing was uh, what you've seen with these photographies, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. That's, that was, you know, uh, our chat earlier about the, you know, the, the texture and stuff is all about this me memory and nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, this was an interesting thing because my, my, my director um, is, um, is a woman and, and historically, you know, women have been photographed by men, yeah? And, you know, the whole discussion of the male gaze has become something of, of a contemporary subject, right? Um, and one of the things that, that Ava um, really um, highlighted was the perception of the body. Right, the perception of the female form, you know, um, and if you watch the film, there's a, a fair bit of nudity in it, um, and it, it was quite interesting. It was quite an interesting process to to understand the evolution of of, of the gaze uh, throughout time, you know, and I believe some some men have done it right, some men have not done it right, you know, um, but it's it was just really about uh, being sensitive about it, and um, you know. Um, 
you'll see that there, there is sometimes uh, quite a, uh, you know, an, an obvious approach to it, and then in other times there's a, a subtlety, and hopefully those moments are chosen right. The body's been the thing that um, has, has driven, you know, wars and, um, you know, been man's greatest friend, man's greatest enemy. Um, and, uh, is, you know, the, just basically the uh, research into that sort of evolution, you know. Did it change your perspective on the female body? Um, I don't know if it changed it necessarily, but what it did for me was um, it, it just heightened my sensitivity to, to it. You know, um, and also working with uh, Odessa, um, you know, she wanted to do all of her own naked, naked scenes. You know, she didn't want to double; she wanted to do it herself. So, there's a, a lot of stuff in the movie where she was completely naked, and and I was I was nervous because I was like, this is so vulnerable for you, you know. So, I, I really wanted to dispel uh, any strange energy of mine because because she she would feel it in person, right? So I wanted to dispel that. So, and by the way, she she got a copy of this before we shot, and she, you know, uh, I made sure the actors saw this so that they understood what journey we were going to go on. You know, and uh, you know, I wanted, I wanted her to feel painted. You know, I wanted her to feel like she was in a painting in a way. You know, and I think there's some really beautiful moments with her. You know, where she's wander wandering alone in this house, um, and it's just like the house itself. We 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 wanted to make quite dark, uh, almost tomb-like, because. You know, it represented the death of all of these boys from the war. You know, their sons died, and the, the house was almost like a tomb of their memories. You know, um, and then all of a sudden, you've got this this nubile um, um, body. You know, beautiful skin tone, um, very similar to to like a Dutch Baroque sort of skin tone, right? Just kind of gliding through this house in a ghost-like way. Um, and I knew that was going to be an important sequence. And I just, I don't know, I just wanted to be familiar with, um, you know. The, that relationship with light and, and composition and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that's the end of the treatment. <laughs> I think I, I, I think it's just so beautiful. We said I think anything visually we show after this is just gonna gonna kill it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, thanks so much, man. Oh, it's absolutely. a huge thank pleasure. You for, thank you for having me. Any questions from you guys out there? Um, you, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I, I don't overly think about, but but it, it's almost like um, it, it's like a practically based decision. I, I mean, I do I, I love having um, LED stuff closer to cast. You know, uh, heat, um, control, color. Um, you know, all of those things play play a major role. Um, uh, and it, obviously, softening and shaping LED is its own its own beast. You know. Um, but there are certain there are certain moments where you you you, you can't beat um, like a Fresnel tungsten. You, you know what I mean? You have to have that. that um, uh, for instance, you know the the scene where they um, it's like a slow motion shot of them at, at a dinner party. You know, um, the, the mood of that immediately you like this has to be um, a Fresnel uh, tungsten kind of thing dimmed down. There's a quality to that that you can't you can't really beat. You know. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the, if you watch the film, the window light into Paul's bedroom, you know, um, you, you're only going to achieve that off a, off a big old 18K, you know. Um, and that was, I'll just, I'll wrap it up with, with that. That was an interesting thing because um, we, had, we had the 18 up um, and, I, you know, I was looking at this, this and I was like, you know, the, the, these shadows just are not working. You know, I don't know if you've ever done this as DPs, but you, if you, you know, if you have a lensed 18 straight in, you know, sometimes you get that like fringing shadow, which is like the, you know, the lens or whatever that's like, kind of giving you like a fringe. It's not hard like a unified LED, right? And then I was like a bit annoyed because you know we had tested this and it worked on the test, but now I didn't really feel it. Anyway, I left and I walked into another part of the house just to go think. Um, and the wing that I walked into was uh, at at like 45 degrees to the light. And now the light coming into that room was perfect. And I was like, okay, fuck, we haven't lost everything. So I went and I got Julian, the gaffer, and I was like, come follow me. And we walked, 
uh, into there, and I was like, you see, this is what I'm looking for. And he's like, okay. So all the, all the window light stuff, the light was panned off, and we just used the fringe um, of, 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 of the 18 to give that quality and that shadow ratio, you know. So that was a cool little thing we learned, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Let's. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother.